I'm just really sad, <laughs> honestly. I'm just, I'm trying not to cry, actually. Why are you so sad? Why? I just, I just don't think it's smart of us to be all willy-nilly about, you know, our pregnancy, your pregnancy, and, and be so remote and so, like, isolated in this third trimester, I mean, you know, like, yeah. you're keen on having a home birth? Yes. Yeah. Midwife? I still think to do that is 100% incredible, but I mean, to be a 10 hour journey across the ocean to the nearest person is, is tough, and I just don't think it's safe. But I don't want to leave another garden because I'm afraid that will never come back. We'll come back. <laughs> I know, but I've lost my garden before. It's like losing an arm, you know, I, everything's covered in snow, like, and I just want to prune and plant and put up the greenhouse and plant the rest of the hundred fruit trees and I'm just I'm afraid that we'll go have a healthy baby but then we won't come back and this place will just be um, a dream that once was. Where are we? This is our we planned for my pregnancy to be a natural birth at home with my midwife, mom, and Jake, but then I started having real birthing contractions and a partial water break far too early, so we collectively decided to go to the nearest hospital to get checked out to see if me or my baby were in any danger. The hospital told me they couldn't help me and needed to fly me to a bigger city and a larger hospital. As it turns out, everything was perfect. But after checking into the hospital, it became very difficult to leave without being labeled with a discharged against medical advice. This was during the thick of the COVID-19 pandemic and the hospital system wanted to keep me until delivery without leaving. They didn't want my midwife and my family to join me. They didn't want Jake to join me. And upon giving birth with no painkillers and as natural as possible, my son was born in perfect health, and both our bodies were perfect in every way. Deep breath, deep breath. We're taking him out to the monitor. He's doing everything himself. We're but tell me, tell me what you think. Is he, is he healthy? He looks great. Right. Look at him. He's like sure. screaming. He's yeah. vigorous. I love it. Can't ask for anything better. But since he's so healthy, can we keep him with the no, boy? No, because he's still premature. Much. So, so what, do you, what do you think? No, no. He's is it? Because of poorly thought out COVID isolation rules, the doctors and nurses took my baby fox from me and wouldn't let me see or be with him for five days and wouldn't let Jake see or be with him for 10 days. Jake had to fight hard to be with me during the birth and we both had to fight hard to get Fox, our son, discharged from the hospital 10 days after his birth. Hey, how's he doing? Good. Is this it for you? Thank you. Oh, all right. Thank Back you. to business. <laughs> that was really good, though. Are you hungry? Yeah. 
I'm super excited. Nice stand. Hey. Local compost and cinder, lava sand in there. <laughs> Hey Fox, you planted your first fruit tree. Woohoo! At 20 days. It smells like a baby. I'm gonna do the mind meld here. He's happy. <laughs> Nicole and I have a new family, and our new baby's nutrition comes from Nicole and also the food we prepare using our Kemikoto knives. In both our temperate and tropical locations, the wild foods and food from our garden are abundant. I've been using my Kemikoto knives to prepare all our meals, and they make quick and delicious work of all the produce and wild food we have been eating. With the Kenpeki knife set, Chukabochu cleaver, and Kuro series knife set, we now have a knife for every occasion and every meal we prepare in our kitchen. Our Kanpeki knife set includes a 7 inch Nakiri knife, 8.5 inch slicing knife, and a 5 inch utility knife. The Ashwood box the knives come in makes a great gift and you can use the special link and discount code below to receive an extra discount. Each knife is made with Japanese Honshu steel, is individually inspected, goes through a 19 step process, and is used by Michelin starred chefs all over the world. We use the Kemikoto Toishi whetstone, which has a 1000 and 3000 grit side, to get that traditional and razor sharp edge on all of our knives. With food prices going up day by day, we love saving money and adding to our overall health and longevity by cooking our own meals. Thanks to our Kemikoto knives for making us the highest quality cooks we've ever been. Use the link and discount code below to get the same knives and whetstone that we're using. About straight arms and then some squats. No, nope, straight arms. Oh, sorry. That's hard. It's like a snatch. Oh shit. <laughs> We're getting you ready for baby number two right now. Oh my god. No way.
I believe everyone should be a master of knowing what is edible and medicinal in their particular hometown or microclimate. It's breathtaking. Hey Brian, thanks for uh, being my Miyagi teacher out here. My pleasure. That approach is pretty beautiful. What about that? Was a good time. All right, man. Being in this new tropical climate, I explored and found some local boys who have been harvesting their own food from the warm oceans here for several decades. The oceans off the west coast of British Columbia have extreme tidal shifts, orca, and frigid cold in which hypothermia is always a risk. The oceans here have a different set of risks. They're full of moray eels, gray sharks, Galapagos sharks, tiger sharks, stingrays, humpback whales, dolphins, and extreme riptides. I'm spearfishing with these locals, learning about which local fishes to hunt, their behavior, and how to read oceanic conditions in order to safely catch and bring home my own food. Listen closely, you can hear the humpback whales breeding the deeper and deeper I go.
On this dive, we also hunted octopus called taco. A new one for me, Brian showed me how to spot, catch, then kill them quick by biting their eyes, turning them white. At the end of each four to five hour session, free diving sometimes 50 plus feet, we always get sea turtles and different breeds of shark coming for our fish. As we see their curiosity getting more and more bold, we head back to shore by reading the waves and finding the less impactful route.
Nenpachi. Nenpachi. Such a fun name to say. <laughs> I think my season names are really good. Mmm. That's good. Mmm. What do you think? I think it melts in your mouth. It's really good. A shark tried to take these from me. A Galapagos shark. Oh, this is a really good fish. Mm hmm And they're abundant. Mm hmm Plentiful. Okay. This one will take home for the juice. Sour salad? My favorite. One of my favorites. Thank you. Okay. It's really good. <laughs> it's like dangerously good. People that have never had that before, can you uh, describe it for them? It tastes like like melted candy. Mm. I don't know. It just tastes really sweet, but not too sweet. But I don't want to say sugar water because it doesn't taste like sugar water. It's just like melted candy. You know, like liquid one. Does that make sense?
Hey, you want to try some durian? Yes, I do. One of my favorites. <laughs> You've been wanting this a lot for your breast milk, right? Yes. For fox? Yeah. They say that gorillas eat it um, to help their youngs map the jungle, to help like identify certain plants and fruits. But mm. I'm sure there's like tons of other benefits. So like brain development awareness. Yeah. Here you go, mom. Thanks. To me, it looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex egg, if like a T-Rex laid an egg. Cheers. Or a dragon. Mmm. Tastes so good. It's sweet. It's creamy. Mm hmm Very creamy. I don't know what to compare it to. Um, in terms of Some say like a, texture. Like a sweet, creamy, buttery onion. Such a weird description. Who knows what a durian even is? <laughs> hey. No. What goodies do you have today? <laughs> Some for you. Oh. Okay. Chocolate pudding. Does it smell? I don't think so. I think this fruit is kind of... The novelty of it is the the size, the amount of meat, and the blackness. Then you can mix with other things, turn everything black. So if you wanted to like make banana ice cream, you freeze it, mix in some with the bananas. Make it look chocolatey. Make it look chocolatey. Yeah. Let me see. Oh yeah, look at that. It's like butter. Mmm. Looks like chocolate. It's so crazy how much it really does look like chocolate. Or, or like an espresso or something. It honestly does taste like like a chocolate pudding. Just not as sweet. Very mild. But it has like a pudding, like a very Pudding, pudding texture. Really good. I think this would be really good in ice cream. Really good. He's looking chunky. I know, he's getting so chunky. He's like 10 pounds now. Like more than doubled his weight. Yeah. In just a month and a half. Almost two months? Yeah, almost two months. It's crazy. Oh. Yeah, he's looking pretty precious. Yeah. Every day he's full of like 8,000 different emotions. I know, and he's like very vocal. He's so loud. Not like crying, but just like with his sounds. Like velociraptor sounds. <laughs> so funny. As you can see behind me, we have this cool mesh tent. So while Jake is working on a lot of the projects, I'm safe in there with Fox um, from all the mosquitoes and just to hang out. It's like a, it's like a little mini yurt, honestly.
yellow canistel egg fruit. I don't even need the knife. What does it taste like to you? Mm. Like sweet. I like a pumpkin pie. Yeah. Even it's like a pumpkin pie. Pumpkin. Or like a cheesecake. Here we go. Try <laughs> so beautiful yeah you want to go see your dad's doing yeah okay let's go <laughs> that better go hey hey we're just coming over to check on you you can plant a can of stuff with me egg fruit yeah Thanks fox it. fox wants to help come here fox <laughs> you're gonna be the savior of my lower back <laughs> <laughs> he thought that was funny. He laughed. He's laughing? Yeah. How's that tree look? It looks good. Hey, you look good. The box looks good. Yeah, it does. It's a little chunky. It's like, yay, free tree! Kisses all around. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Is he gonna be like a small. Watching me, watching me, ni shoshima. It's gonna be a sumo wrestler, you know that, right? <laughs> no way. It's like beefcake. <clears throat> I'm trying to go above grade because it's so wet here. Fox, tell me when it's straight. Nishi Juanma. strength every morning we go on like a 30 minute walk around trees and he just loves the leaves yeah. and the trees he's so intrigued look Woo, you reach for it <laughs> oh. <laughs> look he's looking right at it yeah his eyes are so blue like the ocean they are so blue oh babe yeah an old, old, old man who plants fruit trees, the fruit of which he will not see. That man will use in the future.
The seat is so big, it's like jewelry. Yeah. It's actually really weird looking. It's like a bug or something. Thanks. This is one of my favorite fruits. What's the texture like? The texture is like, kind of like an avocado. Kind of creamy. Like cheesecake? Cheesecake. And it tastes like, like a pumpkin pie. Very desserty. It's not too sweet. It's really good, honestly. It tastes like a pumpkin pie. That's what I think. Yeah. It's really good. I mean, so cliche, but next level. Look, it's like syrup coming out of there. Oh, it's like syrup. Mm. Sapote for the mommy. Mommy sapote. AKA pumpkin pie. No, I'm just kidding. Just yeah, it's true. The lithium lawnmower is not full, so let's plug this in. Let's now plug this in. So this is on the lawnmower. You can see how this one's flashing as well, which in real life, it's not flashing. It's just flashing on camera. 78% and it's being charged. We got the fourth bar out of five charging up. So the goal zero is charging my lawnmower. No gas, no oil. So I'm kind of running them in parallel and now I've got an 800 watt system that can feed that battery. Um, so this is gonna be good for like a small basket like this kind. Okay. I mean, it's not very clear to see what's going on, but that's the rim right there. Yeah. So that is gonna be this, mm. which we're gonna wrap around. Now, let's say this one, same thing. You see how it's going under, over, under, over, mm -hmm. and then it's gonna come into the next gap like there. So if we just did this one, this is the next one and then it's gonna be this one, and so on.
some of these guys I'm not gonna get to right away, so like I'm gonna pot them up so they stay healthy, you know? I think you can jiggle that Perfect. That's curvy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, baby. How's the coffee flowers? Mmm, it smells really good. It doesn't smell like coffee though. It almost smells kind of citrusy. There's something in the sky that all I see is you. Holding on to us as if it's our love. I'm a dreamer.
Do you want some uh, coconut? So when he's a better kicker than me, it's because of you. All right. Perfect. It's the best one I've ever had. Here you go. Thank you. What do you think? That's good. That's a good one. Inside for you. Thank you. I love when the coconut's like that. Mm. So I planted them. Um... What a treat today. I love, 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 love coconut like this. And it's like thick and chewy. Mm. So good. So good. It's a good piece right there. Mm. I'm in heaven. Okay, come on, let's go. Hey Fox, are you ready to get in the water? Are you ready to go join dad? Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. You Guess ready? what? Minerals. <laughs> oh, you're so cold. Whoa. How's it going? Good. Check it out. Bananas! <laughs> oh my gosh, there's bananas down there? Yeah, we have a secret grove that I didn't plant and it was already here. It looks like it's been there for decades. Wow. It's got all kinds of little babies, little cakeys going. 
So the corn is established and it's, it's having a hard time growing because it was so like, a lot of them rotted and it's mm -hmm. got limited sun. So I, I just opened it up, cool. gave it more airflow and sun. And wow. At the farmer's market, um, I got a local person that um, had apple bananas and Thai bananas. So these are two varieties that we're going to plant. Or can I have one? <laughs> and now since we have no idea what this is, we're going to call it Moe Uhane banana. Ooh. B-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-S. It's bananas. <laughs> Come on. These are amazing. You composting right there? This is really good. Nice hat. It's for fox, it's extra shade. To the river! Hey. Okay, so we're heading down to the river. I haven't jumped in yet, and neither of you. Nope. So we're gonna do it together. I'm a little nervous, I don't know why, because it's probably gonna be cold. <laughs> and what's in the water? I guess we'll find out. Yeah, hopefully there's no alligators. Just kidding. But you guys remember my friend, Summer. <laughs> She's here visiting to meet her new nephew. Yes. So he's as precious as he looks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. Are you ready? Ready to look. Side down. You just say. I think I might just like we can hold hands. Just jump in. Oh, just like okay. jump as far oh, as you oh, can. Oh, look, there's sun. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sucking myself out. But this is your first time jumping in. Yes, it is. You haven't gone with me. You had to wait yes, for I your best friend. I had to wait for my best friend. Yes. <laughs> Okay, she gives me the strength. I do. <laughs> okay, so get some, get some adrenaline going here. Let's go. I know. I'm gonna see the boss. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. I'm. <laughs> okay. Okay. I have some. Ah, Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and then we're gonna kind of like run, run and jump. We did it! <laughs> nice job, guys. Can I throw you in now? <laughs> yeah. And then just pull down. There you go. And then just, you kind of feel it. Yeah, I think it's just like, just like feeling it. Yeah, is there like a seed or anything? No, you just put the whole thing in your mouth. Say, Surinam cherry. Oh, this one's huge. Is what is this called? Surinam cherry. Surinam cherry? Yeah, it's really... and That's actually really good. I think that's all of them. Mmm, mm, that one's good. Is that yeah. One?
blanket. He's so cute. I know we did good. I know. <laughs> I can't believe we have a baby. It's so crazy. Yeah. Little foxy boy. <laughs> foxy boy. He has so many nicknames already. Isn't it crazy how literally nine years ago this month is when we got our tattoo? It feels like one year ago, but it also feels like a hundred years ago. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. But so but we're still friends forever, forever, <laughs> <laughs> forever, forever. Putters, yeah. putters forever. It's so funny. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, you know. I don't He's unenthused. Yeah, he's just like coming. <laughs> What do you think, using the fallen logs to make a little impromptu tarot race bed? Nicole's birthday, our anniversary, and Mother's Day all happened just days apart. So we used these special occasions as an excuse to adventure up the Oregon and Washington state coasts. We saw some endless sandy beaches which belonged in a dream.
first uh, rosemary? Yeah. <laughs> he loves it. We continued to make our way toward the Canadian border and everyone, including Fox, were ready to get out of the car and return home to our wilderness yurt sanctuary, Komorebi. How's your hiking partner? Fell asleep. No, that's a good thing. <laughs> He's out.
our sun. Ah. <laughs> Hi. How It's a big, big day today. Look at Daddy's loading up the boat. Are you excited? Are you excited for your first boat ride? Are you excited? All right, big day today. We're heading home. We're heading home. All right, you ready? So ready. So ready. Puma's ready. This is me. Yes, no, you. Oh, his eyes are open. You feel the cold breeze? Woo! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> what do you think, Fox? You're so cute! <laughs>
，你很高，你很大。Where's Fox? He's taking a nap. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, let's see this. You said your dad is a bow enthusiast, right? Yeah. Oh, I was so up high. <laughs> it's so far. Oh, nice. Ooh. <laughs> it's like that's where you should be. 
Hey, Fox Man. <laughs> hey. Looking good, bro. <laughs> He's excited. Mm, let's go. Hey. Hey, you look good. He looks good. Totally. Let me check out all your gardening work here. He's the forest prince. <laughs> How's our place look? It's looking good. Need some TLC, but it's good. Yeah. Oh. Are you eating my asparagus? Be gone, my friend.
all of the like precious items that I potted up before we left. They're doing well and they have such incredible earthworms inside the soil, like just incredible earthworms. Ready? One, two, three, fly! <laughs> Shoot! <gasps> Boom! Oh, the big man! Oh! There's not even any mosquitoes out yet, but these black flies are always the first ones to come out after the winter and they are relentless and they bite. And if I duck underneath the camera, it's the solution. I mean, they think the camera is a living being and they are attacking the camera like crazy. And I just stay crouched underneath it and I'm safe. <laughs> Look at how many, oh my gosh. And probably 2% have found me, but 90, 95 plus percent of just sticking on the camera up there.
day, we were headed in our small inflatable boat to harvest wild herbs, crab, and prawn. When out of nowhere, a small pod of resident teenage and baby orca popped up next to us, and we're having fun playing in and riding an eddy as the tide was receding. We pulled our boat over to the shore of the little island next door, turned off our outboard, and just watched the show. Watch it. Watch it right there. You see him? Oh my gosh, he's going right over. Yeah, there you go. This is amazing. They're like two little, two little teenagers, two little kids. They are the two little guys. I know. I hope he's not. I am. He's about to go right over top of me. That, now there's three. He's gonna go to sleep, babe. You're gonna do it. Good. He looks so zen and comfortable. <laughs> Get my arm workout in for the day. He looks enormous. He feels enormous. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, bro. Good night. Are you sitting? Nitola.
早安。So, a car battery that's charged with the solar panel powers this pump, and then the water's from rainwater off the roof. Mm -hmm. Get the dog. Don't do it. I will. Don't do it. I have a baby. And if you have extra water, you just turn around and uh, water the garden.
Thank you, my friend. Play with it so they're gonna fire gets too raging. Yep, got the logs soaking in the so now. Oh, it smells so it smells so good in here. Like it smells like bacon, like maple, like maple bacon. That alder wood just makes it smell so good. Second thing I noticed is that this whole thing is empty. <laughs> so if we're really gonna survive out here, we need to this is only our second time using it, right? Because the first time we built it, used it successfully, and then we went to the bug out location. Mm -hmm. and had Fox. So this is kind of like us making sure it still works great. And if it does, then I say we fill the whole thing and get the whole winter of food. Yeah, that sounds good. I think it looks pretty great. So this is still like an experimental one. So I did some thicker pieces and thinner pieces. And so, it's great. The texture of the thin piece is really good. The thicker piece. Mm. This time I smoked it longer. Even the skin is good this time. It's fabulous. Mm. It's the best, seriously. Chewy. Salty. I don't know, it's just really good. Tastes like jerky. That shirt's cool. What, uh, what kind of shirt is that? Thank you. Um, it was, I wore it when I was pregnant, but then it also has like a zipper right here so I can breastfeed easily. A breastfeeding shirt. Cool. Yeah. 
it's nice, cozy. It's a little dirty. We better hide this because I'm gonna eat all of it. Goodbye. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Do you like it? Hi. Like your feet? Hey, what's happening over here? Hey. Wanna join uh, us on our bath? Of course, you guys look really good. It's nice and warm. Ooh. Ooh. Nice head, bro. Fox's first science lesson, displacement. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so much fun. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Okay. Mr. Tongue. <laughs> Grandma tree, let you be, let you live a long time and be sacred. Wow, that looks beautiful. What do you think, Fox? Is that enough bugs around my head? There's a lot. <laughs> cool, get in the car, get in, get safe.
almost ready. Cooking the rice in the broth of the coconut curry, so it's gonna be like extra seasoned rice. What'd you find there? Some more wild rose. What are you finding in there, babe? And some wild rose. Let's see one. Super fragrant. <laughs> and the berry is the rose tips. So this so, is just the flower. Not that yellow one, yeah? Not the yellow one, no. The, the pink one. And it smells so fragrant. Amazing. I'm so excited. Very excited. All right. What are you going to do with it? I'll make it into tea. Or um, I was thinking about doing... Um, like making a face cream, like infusing it with cacao butter or shea butter. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Seaweed, some seed lettuce. <laughs> nope, <laughs> I feel weird. extremely cold and there's been no red tide. I think we're safe to go for it. Yeah.
so good. leaf looks pretty good. It's like stained glass. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's so beautiful. It's a great shot. I like this outfit you chose for him today. Outfit? He's naked except for a hat. <laughs> and his diaper. Yeah, we got this hat from a friend. So. Hey, I like your hat, bro. Yeah. And he loves this carrier. It's the new one. And he can actually see out, which he loves doing. So, yeah. What do you have to say? What do you think? <laughs> hey, Pangyo. 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 Pachi. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, so it turned into a sunny day today. This morning it was pretty cloudy, and then we had a little um, fun adventure out on the water, and we harvested a bunch of stuff, and I just want to show you uh, what we got going on here because um, we are utilizing the sun so much right now. Um, so let me show you. We have some sea lettuce dehydrating here and right there. And under this bamboo tray, we have some wild rose. These are almost done. These are actually from a couple days ago. Um, you can hear they're kind of crunchy. These ones I just picked today. So yeah, there's that. And underneath this one, we have some wild yarrow. That you guys watched me harvest. So I just chopped it up into little pieces. Here we have foxes cloth diapers in the sun and some kelp seaweed blowing in the wind right now. So hopefully the sun stays. Um, we got a couple of clouds. Come on sun, stay with us. First time in the hammock. I think he loves it. Mm-hmm. Yay! Yeah. 
Yay. Here's some reddish microgreens for you. Thank you very much. These are fresh. Oh, look at that. Schmeel, <laughs> It's like I'm tired, nap time. Yes. Should we move the wasabi somewhere else? So for a sushi tonight, we can pick some of the leaves and eat some of that. Mm -hmm. But then I found this, uh, not a big one, but it is a rhizome that we can... We can mash up here and have like real wasabi, not green horseradish. <laughs> what do you think? It looks awesome. I'm excited to taste this. Me too. And I'm excited to move this to a better area where it's uh, going to grow better. Forty years ago, our property was logged and replanted. It's actually been logged several times, and when forestry replants a logged area, they monocrop conifer or pine trees and overplant spruce, cedar, or in our case, on our property, hemlock. For those of you who have followed us since episode one of our off-grid journey, you know that Nicole and I couldn't even barely walk into our property when we arrived as it was so densely overcrowded. These trees were planted by humans 40 years ago in the hopes that they can come back every 50 years or so and clear cut again. 
Now that we own the land, we are thinning out and clearing select areas in order to plant and allow for biodiversity, sunlight, and airflow, which will give us enough sun for solar energy, gardening, and planting a fruit tree orchard. We are thankful to have the abundance of trees in that we use every part of the tree for cooking, heat, drying, dehydrating, building materials, and compost or soil creation. Last year, before we left Komorebi, I cut down a patch of hemlock and spruce to make way for the garden and fruit tree orchard. Now, that wood has become seasoned, and I'm working on cleaning it up, milling it with my Alaskan chainsaw mill, and bucking it for firewood. We also have a very big project in the works. We cannot live in the 30 foot diameter yurt forever and would love to turn the yurt into a guest cabin for hosting our family and good friends. This year, maybe inspired by Fox, we are planning to erect and finish our permanent off-grid home. There's a one acre spot on our property where decades ago before we owned it, someone cleared trees and in doing so created the sunniest spot on our 20 acres. Now, this spot is overrun with salmonberry and alder, and since we covet the precious sun in this Canadian rainforest, we have chosen this place for our permanent home. Please subscribe, hit the bell button, and stick with us to watch us build it and finish it by this autumn. Hey, how's it going there? Good. Nice little shaded spot in the sand. Perfect. Hey. Yeah. Do you like this place? All by yourself, sitting by yourself. Yeah. Watch out for the eagles. He's got this new, like, beat on me, beat on dad thing. He does it to me, too. Okay. I think he likes the water on my skin.
<laughs> I think it's a little too cold for you. Yeah, but soon. Okay, bye.
tiny berry. Oh. It's not easy to get to. It has some berries on it. Oh, there's tons. We planted this last year, so. In the raised bed. In the raised bed. And then we moved it so we can make room because obviously it got really big in the raised bed. Um, but we moved it. There's so many on here. Last year, I think we, we got quite a bit on it last year too, right? Let's see what they look like. They're just like really dark purple. And then when you, as you touch them, the color kind of changes. Wow. Let me show you Inside looks like that. Cool. Feeling on your feet? <laughs> <Yes>. <gasps> Yay! Dirty toesies.
nice lighting and shadows over there. Thank you. We're making some baozes. Am I saying it right? Yeah, baozes. Baozes. Um, we haven't had them since we've been back, so Jake made a mixture. Um, you saw me pick some fireweed, which kind of tastes, the leaves taste like spinach. We have onions, chives from the garden, mushrooms that we dried last season. Um, just a lot of good stuff. And then we also have some red beans cooking now. So we'll make like a dessert one. So yeah, but don't judge me on how I fold this because I'm not very good, but. It actually looks pretty good. It's so cute. I like a traditional Chinese grandma who's teaching the family here. <laughs> All right, now I gotta make like a lot more. <laughs> Ginseng. Just so everyone knows, this is how we're filming each other now. think they're chef done. Oh yeah, they're done for sure.
Hey, so there's one. What do you think? They look good? Yeah. Can you see this working? Uh, I hope so, yeah. This just comes from my brain. This idea. <laughs> that cure for a day I'm hearing the bear behind me constantly. I think I have PTSD. <clears throat> Yay! Celebrate! Oh my gosh, I think that was the dangerous thing you've ever dangerous thing you've ever done. <laughs> that was pretty sketch looking, babe. You balancing on a hay bale and a freaking Three step ladder, come on. <laughs> There's gonna be like solar advocates and electricians out there and off graders going, What the f is that guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a Jake Mace original. I, I'm not an idiot. I know what I'm doing. I can spin this thing. Sunset, sunrise. I like hearing that. You like it? Live among wild nature. I will swim with whales. I will forage like the bear. I will roam softly like the cougar. I will build my own shelter. I will pump and collect my own pure water. I will grow and catch my own food. I will ride the winds and ocean waves. I will raise my family to be a better human and steward of the earth than I am.
Look at this flower. It's so pretty. Nice. And then look at the size of this one. It's perfect. Mm. Here you go. Ooh, there's another one over here that looks about this size too. Did I get it? There we go. Another one. What does he think of it? Does he want to hold it? Straight from your garden. What do you think of that? <sighs> you cook it up. You eat it for lunch. I'm gonna eat it right now. Your mouth is too small, bro. I don't know. Five, seven. See ya. Hey, so how was it today? <laughs> I think we got uh, we got lunch here for yeah for the doctor. How how many uh, how many fish did we get? I think One, eight. I think eight. Eight, eight yeah, good eight, rockfish eight. and uh, greenlings. Right. For Nicole Fox, Puma Kai, and the doctor. <laughs>
Thank you. You made the flame big enough? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Definitely big enough flame where it's charring the... Look at that char. Beautiful. So what are we eating, chef? It's like a, a salad. It's like a grilled veggie salad with uh, one cotton salmon by Jake Mace on top. <laughs> and Garden. veggies from the garden. Yeah, raw veggies in the bottom, grilled veggies in the middle, salmon on top. Nice. With some thunder in the background. Yeah, the storm's blowing in. <laughs> storm here, a little lady. <laughs> a little lady. <laughs> What is it, bro? Are you excited? <laughs> excited for dinner? Yeah. yeah. Are you excited for the thunder? Do you hear the thunder in the background? <laughs> Yay! He definitely hears the thunder. Okay, we're gonna try carrots and squash from our garden. What? Tastes delish. Try some. You just steam it for him. I did, yeah. <laughs> I don't actually put it in your mouth, bro. What's so funny? <laughs> Does that taste stuck. good? He hasn't even got it. You being a ham for the camera?
Oh my gosh. Enggak sama ni tu dong. Is that funny? Is that good? How's your ma? Since I wish you ma. How's your ma? Han how chu. Han how chu. Okay, watch mama eat this. Ready? Uh. Mm. The sauce is really good. The dressing. Really good. The fish is next level, babe. Okay, you want to try a piece? Oh, you like it? Han Yeah. It's a hit. Thank you. <laughs> Just before we returned to Komorebi, one of our many cameras caught a big solitary black bear using Jake's wood pile as a shady rest stop and toilet for the afternoon. We are home to the largest population of mountain lion, also called cougar, black bear, and coastal wolf. Grateful that this guy didn't come any closer to our yurt. Forecast told me I had like five days of sun in a row, and now I don't want to take a step back. I want this wood to ride. It's not too much rain. It'll be fine. Right. Fox just told me he's gonna get his gloves on. He's gonna help you. Thank you. That would be super viral. If a <laughs> six-month-old baby hopped up. Yeah. I started shucking wood. Right. What you can do, is you can touch. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you think? Give me guys the dead pan. Yeah. Hey. Hey. It's all the way to the top. What do you think? Looks good. What's your um, reasoning behind not chopping them? <laughs> um, 
Um, I can tell you, but maybe it's stupid. No, I don't think so. So I like chopping the wood, but you know, to chop it all at once, it's like three days, oh. eight hours a day. And I'm really tired at the end, I'm like really sore and you waste three full sunny days. Yeah. So I'm trying to do other projects in the sunny days and I'll just chop these when we need them at a time as we need them. So it's like, instead of a rocket going, you know, and then fizzled out. Or like a slow moving freight train, a little chop in each day for the whole winter. Cool. And I, I really dried all these out. Like these rounds have been sitting out in the sun all summer. So not only is it as dry as we've ever had the wood, but um, I don't think we've ever had this thing completely full. I think we always start taking from it too early before it's all the way full. For sure. So it's like a time capsule. It's like our investment. Yeah. You know? No, it looks beautiful. It kind of looks like, um, you know, those like homemade bee attractors. <laughs> That's exactly, it's, it's a bee hotel. Yeah, a bee hotel. Yeah, every time. Yeah, that's funny. It's pretty. Some, oh, you already moved it. There's some like flattened mice in here. I see ginseng uh, hunting in there all the time. Yeah. Flattened mice casserole for dinner in the oven. Gross, we're not on alone.
think? So you okay planting in tires? Is that okay with you? Yeah, we did it the first year and our tomatoes were successful and we're reusing and I mean, fine. <laughs> Same. Same. Like three. One a bit longer. Well, you think they're flooded enough? Yep. I wonder what vehicle these tires were attached to. Tractor. Tractor? That big one, I think. Hey there, farm girl, where's your tractor? <laughs> Not here yet. Coming? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go check on Fox and then I'll give you guys a tour of our garden. All right, come on guys, let me show you our garden. Watch out for the electric fence. Um, this is for deterring bears and deer and humans. Just kidding. Come on. Um, where do we begin? Okay, we'll start with this bed here. This bed is a big L-shaped bed. We have like uh, maybe four or five different types of strawberries in here. And the strawberries are already done. Um, we've already harvested a lot, made some jam. Um, but it looks like they're putting off a second wave of strawberries, which is awesome. But as you can see, there's tons of flowers and even some strawberries here that um, aren't ripe yet. And then behind the strawberries, we have a bunch of different varieties of blueberries. We've already harvested a couple, maybe like three. Um, they're not quite ready yet. And with these blueberries, we planted them pretty small. So we're investing in the future. And as you can see, they're really starting to bush out. Uh, so we're hoping next year we'll have a much bigger crop. This year we'll probably just get a little bit, but um, that's what we're doing. Behind here we have a tomato. We have an extra tomato, so we just put it back there. And that's pretty much it. This bed is just strawberries, blueberries, and one tomato. Now I'll come over to you and show you guys this back side of the garden. This bed we have sugar snap peas. Every day I'm out here just kind of training these to go up the little lattice wall that we made. Coming down here, have some cucumbers. I think this is like our fifth one harvesting and it's so big. Look how big this is. Every every time I harvest it, it's like this big. Here we have some smaller ones coming, some more flowers. Here's kind of a medium sized one. This plant is doing really well. <laughs> um, when we got it, it wasn't looking so great. So we're really, really happy with it. Here we have two sunchokes, uh, purple and white. Babe, the white one looks so much more uh, strong on the top. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it looks pretty good. We'll probably harvest more towards the fall for these ones. Okay, here and here we have two cannabis plants. It's our first year growing cannabis. We're mostly just growing it honestly for the leaves because I'm going to dye with them. Uh, they make a really strong, deep blue. So I'm really excited to experiment with that. And we also use the leaves for our smoothie, put them in our smoothies. Uh, really nutritious. Coming down here, we have our two massive tomato beds, which I probably won't be able to fit down in there, but we just have tons of different varieties of tomatoes. You can see they're already starting to... Honestly, Jake has... I can't take any credit for this 
amazing display of tomatoes right now because Jake has just been working really hard on it, staking them and tying them off. Um, so babe, all the tomatoes we get are because of you. So thank you. And then you guys seen earlier, we just planted three more tomatoes. Um, they were already in pots, so we just decided to put them in the ground. So we have like miscellaneous tomatoes everywhere. But okay, let's actually see if I can look up through here. Because it'd be kind of cool. I just don't want to hit the plant. You know what the smell of tomatoes remind me? <laughs> no, it looks awesome back here. There's so many. And as you guys seen in our last video, we have caged tomatoes back here. We're just experimenting, seeing how they work. So the front half is uh, steaks, just one steak. And here in the back are caged. And honestly, it looks about 50-50. They both look great. So we'll know when we get the harvest. Let's see if I can get out of here. <laughs> it's a tomato jungle. <laughs> okay, I survived. Onward. Oh my gosh, there are so many squashes in this bed. I can see them. Wow. One of our squash beds, zucchinis in the front, and then two circular squash. Which ones are producing more? Um, all of them. <laughs> just in this bed, I would say the circular because there's two of them. But here's just one, but there's a lot in there. Let's pull them out and we'll get to freezing them. Yeah, and then here's a zucchini on this side. Let me grab this for you guys here. Ooh, there's a perfect one here. There we go. We have two nice zucchinis. Um, it's like an Easter egg hunt, but with squash. Uh -huh. She's done pumpkins in this bed. Look at this one. Another one. And go around to the back. I think that's it for this one for now. But there's so many little ones and flowers coming off. We're going to have squash for days. <laughs> Months. Okay. Okay. So this bed has a variety of things. Uh, we have like a little strawberry here. This whole back part is beets. We actually have a really big beet here. I love beets. Hopefully in the future we can have a lot more beets because this isn't enough to pickle, but it's just enough to eat. That one looks great. Or juice. Yeah, this one looks awesome. Then this row here we have dinosaur kale. Uh, coming up, I'm going to dehydrate it and powder it. Hey, so uh, time has passed. <laughs> yes, Fox woke up from a nap. From his nap. It's so funny how much longer it takes us to film things now. Yeah. With the little kiddo. But do you want to hold him while I finish the garden tour? He's so happy. He loves being out here. It's like his favorite. <laughs> hey, brah. How e do me li di mo li hua. Fun fang me li manger ya. You want to watch mom do a garden tour? You want me to hold him? Okay, I forget where I was, but we have beets here. I think I just picked a beet. Here we have all of our dinosaur kale. Um, coming up, I'm gonna chop most of it, dry it out, and then we're gonna powder it. Uh, next to the dinosaur kale, we have leeks, and then we have broccoli here. Just like what I'm gonna do with the kale, I'm gonna harvest some of the leaves, dry them out and uh, powder them, so that'll be coming up. And let me show you the pink celery that we're growing that Jake's really excited about. <laughs> So here we have a uh, Chinese pink celery. First you're trying to grow it from seed and um, it's taking a little bit longer, but I mean, it's working. It looks really great. Again, I can't take credit for it. Jake's been out here babying these. He's really excited about them. So they look awesome. Um, they're doing really good. So this basket's so heavy now. <laughs> okay, let me show you our other zucchini patch. 
where we have some monster zucchinis. And yes, I know we need to put little handles on these, but we haven't. <laughs> So this is how we film now. We film mom doing the garden tour. Me how? <laughs> what do you see, bro? Here we have some shishito peppers, different types of bell peppers. I don't know if you can come in here and see. We have some green ones growing here. There's so many of them and all the flowers too. Behind the shishitos, we have some bell peppers, but when they get bigger, we'll, we'll show you. Uh, here we have some chamomile, more peppers. We have another tomato here. We have an nasturtium here. And then let me show you this monster zucchini that we need to pick ASAP. There's several of them. Yes. Oh my gosh. There's some good ones in there. Yeah. Honestly, maybe a little too big, but we got pretty... Oh, bless you. We got a pretty big one here. Let's keep finding. Oh, right here. It's a pretty good medium sized one. Another one here. Did you just water? I did. How are you getting wet? Yeah, I'm getting water all over me. Sorry. One. Oh my gosh, there's a really big one. <laughs> I thought it was this one, but oh my god, we let that go way too far. So I'm telling you. Here's two more. You guys. <laughs> it's, I think it's bigger than Fox. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so big. It's so heavy. Oh shit. This is, I think, about the length of Fox right now. That is crazy. We can't let it get this big. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here we have our potato bed. It's really exciting because it's already starting to die back. That's what you want. And I don't want to disturb it too much, um, but we do have potato right here. Little purple one. Oh, here's, some. here's a good. Here's a good one. Yeah, so they're ready, huh? Yeah. So that's exciting. And some more. And here we have our L-shaped carrot bed. We also have a carrot bed here in the front, like carrot and potato. I'm gonna feel around to see if um, any of them are ready to pick right now. And there's this one. Honestly, need a little bit longer, but we can start harvesting some of them. They also have some purple ones in here too, which we grew those last year and they were so scrumptious. There's a couple of good purple ones in there. Ooh, this one might be a good one. Carrots are crazy. It's always like a gamble. Ooh, is it? Ooh, this one's a good one. Could have gone a little bit longer, but still. So it's looking awesome. So this is our garden, it's thriving, it's doing great. And not only do we just eat from our garden, we also have an abundance of food from the wild, from the ocean. Um, mushroom season is just around the corner and we are so excited because we love mushroom hunting. Um, and now we get to take Fox on all of our little secret trails, which we're really excited about. We also harvest a ton of seaweed. Um, so yeah, we, we're eating a lot of really amazing foods from the earth, so yeah. Thanks for the tour. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, let's get the fox man out of that. <laughs> see ya. Bye. Can you see me like disappearing in the forest of squash? <laughs> oh my gosh. It's heavy. It's a lot of food there. So much food. Here's my dye garden, first year doing it, and it's been amazing. I don't know all the plants yet, um, I'm still learning, but we have some matter back here, which I'll harvest the root. We have indigo here, which I've been harvesting a ton of the leaves, as you guys have seen, to make shirts and onesies and experimenting my butt off. Here we have sage, here we have woad, uh, which I haven't really played around with it too much yet. 
Um, here we have Cropsis, Lavender, um, Black Knight, some thyme, and chocolate mint and stuff. Hey, your Black Knight is putting off quite an insane looking flower. I know, it's so beautiful. Like all these plants are brand new to me. I've never grown them before, um, but it's putting off some really beautiful flowers that I'm going to pluck them off and do a lot of bundle dyeing. So I'll show you guys that. Back here we have some wisteria growing that we're training to create a beautiful wisteria um, archway. So we have two on this side and then two on this side. And that's pretty much it for this little area down here. Adios. What's that all about? Why are you always concerned about ginseng? Because we walk a little bit further than I think his comfort zone, and so he always meows. But it doesn't look like he's following, so... Oh, there he is. <laughs> Come on, ginseng! But he does pretty good about getting back. Come on, kitty, kitty! He just wants to be part of the fam. Let's go. Come on, guys, let's go. The dogs are stealing all of them. What is it? Guys, share the blackberry bounty. Gosh. Little piggies. They love them. Fox, what do you think? What do you think of our He's family like... walk? <laughs> Yay! You're so excited! <laughs> oh my gosh! You're so excited! <laughs> yay! You want to show the people your little tooth that you have coming in? Go yay! Got a tooth in there. <laughs> yeah. I think the other. He's been uh, he's been growling like. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yay! First tooth. Are you happy for blackberries? You want to try some for fresh? It's a soft one. Is he going to make a face? <laughs> How your ma? Oh! <laughs> and... He used to be clean. Hachirma, Shihwama. You got pink lips now. <laughs> or purple lips. What are you gonna do with all these? Um, I think we make some blackberries. I don't think we can hear you with Fox's sounds. 
I'm gonna make some blackberry jam. And then if we have a lot, which there's a lot of blackberries around here, so I'm gonna try, I'm also gonna try to do a strawberry <coughs> rhubarb blackberry pie. There you go, that was the first one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and he made blackberry juice. Yay! <laughs> okay, and we're free. Yeah. <laughs> You're so excited! Yay! Is he happy? Oh yeah, yeah. he's happy. Let's go! He's grabbing my hair like <laughs> the mane of a horse. <laughs> All right, here you go. Thanks. Here's your breakfast of sea cucumber. I'm nervous. <laughs> it looked pretty funky. Let's see it. I'm scared. <gasps> I think it's still moving. It is not. <laughs> Twitching. Because it's cooking. I mean, it's supposed to be like clam or scallop. Like us. I mean, humans have been eating this for thousands of years. I mean, scallop, you know? I mean, it smells really good. Well, I did it in garlic and olive oil and pepper. But no salt. It tastes pretty good. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. If you, like, cut them in half or add them some to something to be really good. Yeah, add them to, like, an omelet or stir-fry. They kind of remind me the smell, too, of, like, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. anyway. I think if I put pine mushrooms in there, you'd be hard-pressed to know which one was which. That's really good. I enjoy it.
you know, why can't I use these natural resources for travel? I would love to travel and see more of the world and go between our homes riding the wind. wind. In 1975, Ted Brewer designed this 35-foot cruising cutter yacht and called it Jason. This Jason, built by Marathon Yachts, is a modified, full, encapsulated fin keel with a skeg rudder and prop assisted by a 28-horsepower Beta Marine diesel engine. Two years ago, during the height of the corona COVID virus pandemic, Nicole and I together privately expressed a desire to travel the world, taking part in the ancient human ability to ride the winds and ocean currents while sailing. Earlier that year, I proposed to Nicole during a sailing lesson. And our instructor was nice enough to help seek a boat that had potential of circumnavigating the globe while not being a lemon and causing us financial harm. A few months later, while Nicole and I were building our bunky cabins and garden, we got a call from Paul that he heard through the grapevine of a sailboat being sold privately by a skillful sailor whose father and her had fixed it up together, hoping to sail it to Mexico and beyond. It's a video right now, rolling. Oh. Okay, take us out of here, see ya. Okay, bye. Here we go. <laughs> New adventure. <laughs> the boat was then called Spray and had been sitting without being used at a small marina for nearly two years. Kayleen, who had completed much of the work on Spray, videoed a lot of her journey for YouTube. I'll link her videos below in the description if you'd like to see our boat's journey. We were able to connect with Kayleen and her partner Tyler for sailing instruction and outings on the very boat she restored and we now owned. Thank you. Thank you. This was priceless to us being so green to sailing. Since then, Tyler has won Olympic gold medals for Canada in snowboarding and Kayleen is leading them both on their new yacht as they travel from British Columbia to Mexico and beyond. We have now been sailing on her for two years and thought it was time to bring her as close to Como Rebi as possible, drop her in the water, and have her join our family. You see our boat? It looks so bizarre. It looks spooky, like a magic trick. It looks spooky. <laughs> what kind of wizardry is holding this up right now? I'll tell you what's holding it up. Four inches off center. Wow. Four inches. 
We just have to wait for the tide to come in now. Yes. To lift her and up. We got to get on board and stay on the starboard side, you know? Yeah. Stay on this side. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then we'll sail it off. I mean, it looks like it's floating now, yeah? I think it has a little more ways to go, but... we got an hour more of tide coming in, so I think we're gonna be good. Let's get on board and untie it. I'm worried that all the all the pressure of the boat now is on these straps that put on there. The good thing is we no longer need a ladder. I can just uh, throw you and Fox up there. Yeah. What you are first on. Get up there, jungle woman. Mama ha mi ha, okay ba. Okay. Ni hao. Of water. I know. Oh, what just happened? Oh, oh, yeah, we're in. Are you good? Woo! Nice uh, I'm gonna power it from here. Okay. No, I'm gonna take off. No, it's it's already been checked out. This is good to go. That thank was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's perfect. It was like um, a dad tying a string around the tooth and closing the door. <laughs> thank you. Look at that view behind you. It doesn't look real. It looks like a. Like My a... front yard. <laughs> Bless you. Over here looks pretty epic too. Wow. Guys, this is real. Look at this. So beautiful.
say. That my kimchi turned out really good. Are you gonna save any for me at all, or? Probably not. No, this is delicious. Hold it up to the camera so we can see the color. It's got a amazing purple in there. That color. What's making that color? Just the purple Napa cabbage. Yeah, I think so. Cause I didn't put anything else in there that has that color. So. Shout out to our friends at uh, Shamrock Farms that showed us the best Napa cabbage we've seen in a while. So beautiful. Let me pull out a Napa. Here. It's got a really good piece. There's the cabbage. Give us a uh, feedback. Is this Michelin star? quality or what? Mmm, it's so crunchy. I like the big pieces of cabbage. I had a good teacher. <laughs> I think all the, like all my pieces that I cut are perfect size. It's very crunchy. That's the key is to cut the veg according to the mouthfeel you want when you're eating it. I'm gonna eat this like all today. Better than uh, yogurt for digestion full of uh, Lots of probiotics, active enzymes. It's so good. Kimchi. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll look good. Yep, yep. Let's go down. Go? Yeah. Slow. Slow. Wait, up a little bit. I missed. Good. Okay, these are just uh they're they're in.
Three, two, one. <laughs> oh. Whoa! It's really cold. <laughs> Hey, you can get out there and swim a couple of a uh, couple of strokes, you know. It's really cold. <laughs> How's your ladder? Oh, fine. Ready? Yeah, let's see it. Ah, just taking breath away. Ah. <laughs> the tropics or Canada? Which? Uh... Oh. Tropics. Ocean, do you like better? <laughs> okay. Been, nice job. Hey, nice job. Nice job. That was amazing. That's like my favorite fox sign language is the tired, the tired eyes.
Okay, I'm gonna let go. Here we go. <gasps> Whoa, look at you. <laughs> Yay, you did it. Tomatoes from the, watch what we do. He loves tomatoes. He's like, I'll eat this one, please. Ugh. Look at the size of his feet. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Let's pick it and put it on a burger or something. Big. It's as big as you. standing here like this, digging like this in this one corner. Just this one corner. Okay, that's officially everything. Look at how much came out of that corner. Some monsters. We can eat, babe. We can eat. We can, we can stay satiated all winter long. Pretty cute, he's just enjoying the, the pedicure. Did Puma help at all? Hurt his knee. No. How did this bed do? This bed did, did pretty good. It's a lot. It's a lot of potatoes. Obviously the red potatoes took over because we did plant a couple of different varieties. But the red took over, but I mean, I'm not complaining. But that one plant of purples made it. Yeah, and this was from a different bed, just, just this cluster, so. Yeah, we got a couple of purple. So. All right. So maybe have two separate potato beds if we know that this one's going to dominate the other ones. Smart. So. Okay, let's uh, keep the dirt on them, yeah, and preserve them. Yes. You guys saw me build this new raised bed and mill the wood last month. Just in a month. Really good radish harvest. That He's like, nice. and what am I supposed to do? All right, let's put you in the safe place, bro.
All right. Oh, there's another one in here. Yeah, you have to dig around. I messed up your home, salamander. Oh, a salamander. Yeah, another one hiding. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, let me bury you. <laughs> let's see. Nice this one. one. Looks, this one looks really great. Oh. Show it off. Let's see it. It smells so good. I like it. Cool. I wonder if I separated them. I'm gonna put them back. Okay, here's two and one. Fox found a good one. Nice, Fox. That's good, yeah? Yeah. Here you go, Mr. Fox. Smell it. Do a pine patch. Whoa. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost ten in this one spot. Wow. It's a lot. Wait, listen. I hear nothing. Because it's the beautiful forest. <laughs> okay. I can't be sure about this one, so I'm gonna leave that one. Be on the lookout for chicken of the woods like we found last year. Okay. What'd you find? The biggest bolitas I've ever seen. But do you think it's too wormy? Look, it's as big as your uh, torso. Ooh, it's a uh, one of the ones that turned blue. I admirable. Admirable. Can I pick it? Yeah, let's see. Dang, dude. <laughs> it's like cutting down a tree. <laughs> <laughs> let's see the underside. Here, touch it for us. Let's see what happens. Or I think it's actually, I think it's a smith. That's crazy. That's Super cool. wormy though. Yeah. Dang. Nice one though. That would have been a great find like two weeks ago. Yeah. It's a good size one. Let's, let's see. I'm winning so far. I just want everyone to know it. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. Do you know who's winning is this guy right there? Of course. It's actually winning. You see yourself? You see what? <laughs> 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 the pines that we forged for? Yes, pine and then there's some chanterelle mm. with our purple potatoes from our garden. It tastes wild. <laughs> it 
Is it good? Yeah, really good. I feel like I like really crushed the gravy this time. Like, and the potatoes, I mean. Man, what an ego on you. <gasps> no, this is like Michelin because it's in season. Look at the coloring. Yeah. Beautiful. Also, our herbs are from the garden too. Mm. The flavor is strong. It's great. Thank you. If you didn't like it, would you tell me? Off camera. <laughs> no, okay. No. I'm telling you the truth. This is this is bomb. Cool. And how do you like your food? <laughs> yeah. You like your broccoli and zucchini? Hey. And some mashed potatoes? Garden food. Hey, Nida. Xi Lan Hua. He's so good at drinking from a cup already. And we're looking for the we're looking for the stem of the plant, the rhizome, the, the rhizome. So see down there. This is like a hearty, thick, like bunch of bushels. Yeah, Shui. Yay! <laughs> that was delicious. Seriously, fresh wasabi is the best. Hey babe, so I think I found a bunch of different like Sprinter vans and RVs and uh, fifth wheels and there's like a wide variety on RV and go. Hi. You want to see him really happy? Watch this. Do, 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 do. Are you looking at Bree? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bree. Hi. This is Bree. Hi, Bree. Here. It's like Puma and Kai's girl companion. Yeah. Are you going to show us the way out, Bree? All right, we ready? Ready? Let's hit the road. Are you going to drive us? Behind you, there's two little blue oh. foxes. <laughs> <laughs> yes.
tap on. Practice your duck walk. <laughs> you feel the power? Nice over. Trucks, so it's 
dancing. Come here. Are you happy to see us? You need to get some more lights on in here. Hi. Hottest fire in the fastest time. I hope so. How? Whoa! Chingewa. Chingewa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa! Woman, <laughs> The main part of living off the grid is making your own meals. Nicole and I come together as a couple when we cook together and our knives make cooking healthier, easier, and more fun. With the Kanpeki knife set, Chukabochu cleaver, and Kiro series knife set, we have a knife for every occasion, every day. This time of year as the seasons are changing, we're trying to use the last of our garden. That means things like broccoli, carrots, and enjoying the squashes we grew all summer. Each Kamikoto knife is made with Japanese Honshu steel, individually inspected, and are used by Michelin starred chefs all over the world. Each knife goes through a 19 step process and has a lifetime guarantee. The 7 inch Nakiri vegetable knife, 8.5 inch slicing knife, and the 5 inch utility knife of the Kampeki knife set rarely ever leave our counter since we use them so often. The ashwood box the knives come in makes a great gift, and since Nicole and I love our knives to be razor sharp, we also use the Toishi whetstone which has a 1000 and 3000 grit side for getting that high quality edge on our knives. Please check out the link below in our video description and use the special code when checking out to receive an extra discount. Yes.
Are there any chanterelles left? I don't think so. If the snow melts, we might find some winter chanterelles. So here's what they look like during the day. What do you think? I think cougar for sure. Look at the the distance that they are apart and then the the distance that the two are apart this way. So like they're together, mountain lion like. And I think the distance, you know, around two and a half feet apart in step. And just the pads themselves are my amateur school of hard knocks uh, tracking cougar. You know, not bear, not wolf. Not Puma and Kai, but huge. Like, if you, I got a Puma and Kai print right over here, and these are about like three times the size. Puma and Kai are 45 pounds. What does that mean? The cougar is like around 150, 200. So, look where they go. They go right to the trail that goes to Komorebi and the yurt. Hey, two cougars. Because once they get to the logging road here, there's medium-sized footprints that go this way, and then there's the big dad or mom footprints that go that way. So it looks like a parent traveling with their teenager. Okay, it's gonna be so cold. So I'm gonna get warm just a little bit more after that workout, because I went outside real quick and it was freezing. So one more blitz here. <laughs> Woo! 
Fox is trying. <laughs> Fox. Woo! Woo! Feel mommy? and there's another one growing behind it. Is that what he thinks of the Christmas tree? There you go. There it we'll is. Do it to the tree. Woohoo. Ready? We're going to do it to the tree. Here we go. Fox, <laughs> <laughs> are so Do you funny. like it? Make sure Come here, Leon. Come on.